You'll only start making real money with 3D printing once you learn how to model or sculpt. The file I'm showing you today would normally require CAD and sculpting skills, but here's the best part. I'm going to show you how to create your own flexi models without any sculpting experience at all. And yes, you can even do it using just your smartphone. Once you learn this, you'll also be able to edit models that are licensed for modification. My flexi skeleton Carnotaurus has three different types of joints, and honestly, these are probably the easiest ones out there. All three can be printed without any supports. At the tail, you can see two rings. They print perfectly from bottom to top, the simplest and most common type of connection. At the leg, there's the second type, also printed from bottom to top, but with a small bridge in midair. And the third type is inside the mouth. I've used that method to make many hand puppets with movable jaws. My kids absolutely love them. By the way, this is where the real money in 3D printing is made. If you look at how many paying subscribers some creators have on Patreon, it'll make your head spin. But here's the problem. Once you join such a Patreon, you'll find yourself competing with hundreds or even thousands of others in your country. You might sell beautiful files, but you'll end up fighting in a price war for just a few grains of rice in profit. And I know the question you're asking, what's inside the boxes? And can I actually make money with this? Yes, we'll get to that in a moment. So, what do you need for sculpting? Honestly, your smartphone is enough as long as it's not 300 years old. I've just picked up the best price to performance device out there. And if you really want to get into sculpting, I'll show you exactly what to look for when buying one. The Honor Magic Pad 2 was available on Amazon for around 400 euros, including a discount code. I grabbed it immediately. There's simply nothing else at that price that comes close for sculpting. Don't worry. This video isn't a tablet review, I'll just cover the essentials real quick. Back in 2023, I had a Samsung Tab A8, mainly for browsing, but for sculpting, honestly, that thing just can't handle it. As soon as your models get more polygons, it starts lagging and even crashes sometimes. 32GB storage, 3GB RAM, don't waste your money. My second tablet was the Link Plus T4 with a stylus pen and 8GB RAM. That's been more than enough for my models so far. The chip isn't the fastest, but the RAM totally saves it. And that's the key point here. At least 8 gigabytes of RAM, and you'll be happy. If it also comes with a Snapdragon chip, even better. My new Honorpad has 12 gigabytes RAM, and that was a real wow moment. For comparison, Apple tablets with 12 gigabytes RAM start at around 1,000 euros, and Samsung devices at about 700 euros. The only tablet that comes close is the Xiaomi Pad 7 Pro, also 12 gigabytes, but smaller display and no OLED. So yeah, I hit the jackpot. In short, if you want something solid, go for at least eight gigabytes RAM, ideally with a Snapdragon. If you want high-end performance for little money, grab the Honor Magic Pad 2 with 12 gigabytes RAM. Now, let's jump into the tutorial. I'm using the app Nomad Sculpt. Most people do nowadays. Even some professionals have switched from ZBrush to Nomad Sculpt. It has everything you need for sculpting. And the best part? There are tons of tutorials out there. We'll start by tapping the sun icon, then choose matte cap, clay. That's the standard style most tutorials use and it's very comfortable to work with. On the right, you'll see your tools. You won't need most of them. I move the gizmo to the top, delete the default sphere and add a torus instead. Here. You can set the polygon count, important for detailed models. Use the yellow dot to change size and the green one for thickness. That's what makes your joints stronger. Then tap gizmo, clone, move the object, enable snap, set the angle to 90 degrees and rotate it in the direction you want. And just like that, your flexi joint is almost done. You can use this method to create chains, flexi animals and other articulated models, all support free. If you're missing the option Darken Unselected Objects, make sure to enable it. Helps with visibility. Clone the torus again. Set the snap angle to 45 degrees. That's a great printable angle for most 3D printers. If you rebuild this connection a couple of times, you'll get the hang of it quickly. Then, move the third torus until it connects the top and bottom rings. Use Select Arrow. Join arrow, voxel arrow, smooth to merge them into one clean seamless piece. 
If later you find the connection too thin, no problem. Just make it wider or cut off thinner parts. That'll make it solid and durable. Here's an example. Let's say you found an animal model on Thingiverse that you're allowed to modify. You can split the body using trim, attach the tail and connect the parts. Done. If one side is floating too high or not touching, use the move tool to tilt it slightly. This gives you the perfect print angle. Just make sure the body parts don't touch each other. Next, go to add, sphere, make the body transparent so you can see inside where the parts overlap. Move the sphere deeper inside than the joint area. Hide it, select your main model, and apply boolean. Boom, a clean cutout. When everything looks good, export as STL and import it into your slicer. Since Nomad Sculpt works in millimeters, the model might appear tiny. Just scale it up to your desired size. If your model has too many polygons, right click and choose Simplify Model. That'll make slicing much faster. Cut off a little flat area at the bottom so it sits better on the build plate. And that's it. Your first flexi creature is ready to print. Don't be afraid to try something new, even if it looks complicated at first. I use cheap, generic filament for testing. I save my bamboo filament for the final versions. And while this project is printing, our first flexi joint is already done, printed with Bamboo Mat PLA, and it looks absolutely awesome. We've just been working on this connection, once with a body and once the same one without. I've exported it. If you follow this tutorial two or maybe three times and then save your connector piece, you can reuse it anytime, without really needing sculpting skills. These connections are very stable, even with just two walls, really solid. My gyro filament, which I bought cheap back then, honestly, I don't really like it. I'm hoping to use most of it up soon for test prints. These are still the old spools, not suitable for AMS. I'm printing it quite hot for this type of filament, but it has a crazy shine, almost looks wet, really shiny look, you should play around with the temperature to get the best results. I usually go with matte filament because the finished products just look more premium that way. That's probably how your first little creature would look. Well, maybe a bit different, but in this video it's really about the connections and helping you lose the fear of modeling. Because hey, I only started about a year and a half ago myself. I'm not the best, but I usually manage to get what I have in mind done. The brim comes off, didn't really need it anyway, but look at the flexibility. And then you just copy and paste that onto multiple body parts. Our connections work perfectly today. And yes, I haven't forgotten the boxes, more on that in a second. Guys, filming, editing and voicing a video like this takes a lot of time and money. I don't earn anything from YouTube since I'm not monetized. So if you'd like to support me, please subscribe or share the video. Even a free download of my models on Maker World would help a lot. My new filament is dried and ready for the next project. Oh, and about the surprise boxes. They're easy to print, easy to open, and perfect for hiding a few little flexi dinos inside. Kind of like a blind bag for a flea market or something. The file also includes three mini flexi dinos and a display stand to show them off nicely. Ankylosaurus, Triceratops, and of course, a Stegosaurus. What do you think? What would be a fair price for a blind box like that at a flea market?